Good evening, gospel revolutionaries around the world. This is Michael Lilborn Williams coming to you live from the bonus room. I'm not going to explain that anymore. <laughs> uh, you know, as I was uh, setting up, I realized I've pushed the table back a little bit so you get a little bit different view. This lamp is usually different. So uh, anyway, I thought I would give you a uh, start out with uh, we've got a conference coming up. You are not going to believe it. It really is amazing. Well, the subject matter is who and what I am not. To know who you are, you've got to know who and what you're not. You've got to eliminate all other possibilities. When you eliminate all other possibilities, uh, somebody like Einstein or somebody like that said that once you do that, you have to accept that what's left is the truth, whether you like it or not. And uh, so uh, great minds thinking great things. Uh, but I thought it, since we kind of moved this back and uh, uh, I, there's a couple of things here in the room that uh, I really do uh, have as mementos of uh, the years that have gone by. And uh, so I thought I'd be a little, a, bit better, a little bit of Mr. Rogers here and give you a tour right there that's my silver giraffes they're not a memento they're not old i got them about three years ago and right here is my birch tree that has no leaves but little bitty lights on it i think it's very pretty and then right here on the wall is a poster of the secret garden from broadway uh, some friends of mine got that for me and had it framed for a birthday many years ago. And uh, uh, it was one of my favorite uh, Broadway shows. I used to visit Broadway often also. Like, you know, I used to go to the Grammys. Oh, well. Now I live in Clinton. <laughs> I live in the secret city now. Um, so, uh, and I'd rather keep that secret, actually. <laughs> Uh, but this is called uh, The Secret Garden. I've had that for uh, quite a long time. And then this other, uh, that's actually a photograph that you can't see very well. But you can go online, actually, and look up uh, Gary Dorothy, uh, spelled just like Dorothy. Uh, uh, Gary Dorothy, and he's an artist in Palm Springs, a good friend of mine. And uh, he's a photographer. And uh, that little picture about there, back there, I shouldn't tell everybody this, I guess, but it's valued at about $700. But the only reason I'm telling you is because it was a gift to me. And this is one of Gary Dorothy's works. And he gave that to me. He let me go into the studio and pick out anything I wanted because I had acquired a uh, substantial um, uh, contract for him to do work for a uh, particular corporation and he did all of their artwork for them, all of their photographs and everything inside. So um, this piece right here, that is, I really like that, but it is an abstract and uh, there's a lot of them around like it. Uh, I, hopefully not one just exactly like it. <laughs> I, I got that also after I moved here. Uh, and since we're showing you around, I gotta show you. Uh, this is my grandson. Yeah, I know yours is cute and everything, but look at that face. <laughs> and this is my granddaughter. That's Lily. And now Lily's going to be mad at me for showing this because, uh, she is now 14 years old and this is probably three years old. So you know how 14 year olds are. Um, so, uh, just, I'm grateful to be in my little place here. Yeah, I used to go to Grammys. Yeah, I used to go to Broadway all the time. But, uh, this is, uh, the life that I live and I live it by choice. And I don't blame anybody for being here and I don't credit anybody for being here either. Uh, so, uh, I thought that as we got started, since I'm calling this the bonus room, you might as well know something about the bonus room, you know? So that was the tour. So Jackie, if you missed the tour of the bonus room, you got to start all over again. <laughs> uh, 
tonight I want to uh, let you know that the Canada Conference is imminent. It is upon us. Uh, Friday night will be the first session. And uh, we have a lineup of teachers. Jackie Barnard is also one of those teachers who just signed on. And uh, he's going to be sharing some things with you. Again, a title of our uh, Canada Conference is Who and What I Am Not. And um, so, uh, you know, we've learned an awful lot. Uh, in the last, just the last couple of years, and I, we're moving at speed light almost on these things. It's like we pick up this wonderful golden nugget that's like this big that somebody needs to go into in greater detail, in greatest of detail. And uh, we look at, at it, we, we show it to you, we get all excited about it, and it was like, oh, look, there's another one. <laughs> we just keep going. So um, what I'm doing is trying to create a lot of work for these guys after I'm gone. So uh, now I'm not going anywhere. Um, I'm planning on being around for quite a while. But just in case, we need to leave a whole lot of work for Daniel and uh, Jackie and all the other guys to do uh, also. Uh, but we learned about the alloy. Remember us going through uh, the term uh, conciliation? And it's not a reconciliation, it's a conciliation, which let us know that for the first time in Christ, uh, uh, opposed to the teachings that you get a lot of places that we've always been what we are now, we have not been. Let me tell you, we have not always been what we are now. What we are, we became in Christ. So stop taking the credit away from Jesus, guys. I don't know what the turn on is about that. Uh, we also learned, we've also learned that you already live in your immortal body because if Christ is in you, it said he would quicken your mortal body while he was inside you, not after you die. <laughs> now, what is immortal about your body? It will never die under sin. Uh, it will never suffer, uh, the law of sin and death. It is immortal. What is immortal about you? It is righteousness. And there's nothing about your mortal body that can cancel out the righteousness of God. Oh my goodness, I'm, I'm so ready for the conference. <laughs> goodness, we're going to be touching on uh, a lot of things. And these are just things we've touched on in the past. We're, we're not going to be talking about that. Uh, where we go into a great deal of detail, greater detail than I ever have about the imputed righteousness. And uh, uh, we take quite a bit of time. I personally have never gone into this amount of detail on the subject of imputed righteousness. Um, we also learned about the old cosmos and the new cosmos. So all of this is simply a fractal of the one. You could teach on any one of these and teach the entire gospel. You could teach any subject on sin, on righteousness, on judgment. All of them are a complete picture of one gospel and every one of them simply reveals the other and one relies on the other for its existence. In Christianity and uh, uh, everything else that I know of other than the gospel, the gospel of peace and the, and the gospel of grace, you have to kind of patchwork them together. And you've stopped teaching about this and now you're teaching about that because that has nothing to do with this, but you're going to teach on it anyway. Uh, that's not the way the gospel works. That's not what truth does. Uh, truth has a fractal nature about it. And one thing about truth is that the next thing also uh, reflects the truth of the thing that you've already learned, or it disproves it, one of the two. It is amazing that there is no fractal of the gospel that can stand unless it supports the others. Every, every part of it must absolutely reflect what you already know or what you already know needs to change. Now, that's the reason we're all the time changing our mind here at the Gospel Revolution, because we have no interest in being right. We have a great interest in learning, uh, because we don't have to be right because we're already righteous. You've been made righteous through the work of the cross. Uh, uh, so uh, a lot of subjects, I think we have about uh, somewhere between 20 and 25 subjects that all of our teachers will be uh, covering on who and what I am not. It is vitally, vitally important that you know who and what you are not. So uh, 
we're uh, uh, really encouraging you about attending the conference, and uh, we're looking forward to that. Um, I want to just take a real quick glance now that you've had the <laughs> Mr. Rogers tour, and uh, I want to take a, a real quick glance. You'll hear just a little bit of this, but I saw something else in it. Uh, as I was getting ready uh, this evening, and I glanced at a couple of notes, and I thought that's worth bringing out uh, real quickly here. And that is going back again to Romans chapter 3, uh, where Paul said, Therefore, by the deeds of the law shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith, this says by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And as I've told you, uh, uh, Don Barris Bartlett beat me over the head with this. I don't know for how long until finally it was like, I got tired of being hit. <laughs> and I finally, finally got it. Uh, so therefore by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. So I want you to look here again, uh, because I'm looking here at the Greek and, uh, the thing that, um, I see here is that some of this is italicized, the word which, and the word by is actually the word in, uh, there's, uh, lots of prepositions in the Greek, and they make a huge, you know, a preposition, you know, you say, well, uh, you know, come by the house. Uh, uh, doesn't mean come in the house. It, uh, you know, uh, prepositions mean something very, very uh, in, uh, incredibly so. So uh, it is important, and we, uh, the way that these prepositions got translated are uh, sometimes can be hodgepodge. Uh, so you really do have to look at the prepositions to see what they are in the Greek. And this one is the, the word dia, and it means in. So it's talking about God having faith in the blood of Christ. Now, what did God's faith in the blood of Christ do? It says that, that the faith of uh, God's faith in the blood of Christ brought righteousness up on all, up on all. That's the part that Don couldn't get across to me. He says, and up on all them that believe, for there is no difference. And he just kept emphasizing this. And it's like, what are you doing, dude? I don't even know where you are. He said, then, of course, then it reads, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So all have sinned. And how did God get all in? That the God's faith in the blood of Christ has brought all in, and it includes those that believe too. Wow, how about that? Because Paul teaches here in the book of Romans that the most important thing about the what we have in Christ came through unbelief. Uh, and he states that very uh, clearly in uh, Romans chapter 11, where he gets his euphoria. And uh, my goodness, he just goes off after he says, that uh, by uh, that God has declared all in unbelief that he might have mercy upon all. So remember, that comes up in chapter 11. We're in chapter 3. So here he has said that this righteousness that is God's righteousness that has come to us because of God's faith in the blood of Jesus. Now let me, I, you know, I don't mean to beat a dead horse, and I don't think it is. We are because the horse is still alive. <laughs> and... Uh, uh, People are making the blood of Christ uh, an absolute mockery. They're saying that the blood, this sacrifice thing and the shedding of blood, oh, man, they just get so upset. Their conscience is offended, just like Jesus said they would, just like Paul talked about people being offended uh, about this incredible gospel of peace and gospel. They are offended. But to keep their offense from showing up, they say, Jesus, 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 Lord, Jesus, Jesus is great. Jesus is wonderful. Jesus is, oh, fantastic. He's here with me right now. He's showing me how to walk down the street. He's showing me how to drive a car. Jesus is just, oh, man, Jesus is everything but what God said he was. <laughs> now, I don't care how spiritual you get. 
when you begin to say the blood of Christ was unnecessary, you just went and got too spiritual. <laughs> because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And uh, which they don't embrace that either, that sin is just a perception. It's not a condition at all, as Paul taught. So um, uh, then, uh, so we have this incredible thing where Paul teaches us, uh, and we're going to go back to Romans chapter 2, verse 16, uh, and read this. Uh, because we we kind of read the end of the story. Now we're going to go back to the first of this story. And it says in verse 16, In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. Now, according to Paul, God judged all men in Jesus Christ. Oh, let me say that again. God judged all people in Jesus Christ. God judged all people in Jesus Christ. Why? For all have sinned. What was the result? God had faith in the blood of Christ, and what did it that do? It brought righteousness to all, including those that believe. <laughs> that's that's what Paul is telling them. There's there, by the time Paul gets through with them, they're thinking, well, what did we even believe for? And he said, oh, it has, makes, it's a big difference, but it's just not what all you thought it was because what we have, uh, folks, the, the power of the gospel uh, is not revealed in what you are going to get the, uh, by your belief. The power of the gospel is revealed in what you get without your belief or your obedience. There is no power of God in your belief. There is no power of God in your obedience. That would be your power, not God's power. <laughs> the power of God is in the obedience of Christ. The power of God is in his faith in the blood of Christ. And therefore, it included all because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Uh, did I show you the picture of my grandson? <laughs> I thought you might need a little break there for just a moment. Folks, this is world transforming. And we have Christians out there saying that it's by your faith. And then we have the other uh, group out there saying that never, it, nothing was ever needed in the first place, that even the blood of Christ was unnecessary. And then Christians don't believe that the blood of Christ accomplished what Paul said it accomplished. Uh, so um, I've already gone well over my time because I took you on the tour. Uh, this will be my last time to speak with you before the Canada Conference. I want to encourage you, uh, this is a transformative conference coming up. I know all the subjects that we're gonna be teaching on and uh, all of your teachers, uh, 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 Jeannie Hope, uh, Nardos Kaviti, Jackie Barnard, uh, Daniel Thomas Rouson, Michael Lilborn Williams, we're, I've got to figure out everybody else's middle name too. <laughs> we don't leave everybody up. Uh, so uh, I think Jackie's going to say, just call me Jackie. Uh, so these uh, things that we have coming up, the subject again is who and what I am not. When you eliminate all possibilities, what is left is obviously the truth. Somebody much smarter than me said that. Love you guys. <laughs>